Question 2D part 1 of the 2011 extension 2 exam says to use the binomial theorem to expand cos theta plus i sine theta cubed. So binomial theorem is one of those things that some people um, really freak out about. I'm not sure what it is. It might be because it tends to be taught towards the end of the year so you don't get as much practice on it. Um, for extension 2 that might be different. Depends how your classes are structured. Anyway, so what we have is our cos theta plus i sine theta cubed is equal to, and here is our binomial theorem, it's the sum from k equals 0 up to 3 because it's cubed, and then we have 3 choose k, so again we use 3 as our largest k value, and then we take our first term, so cos theta, and it's to the power of 3 minus k, and then i sine theta to the power of k. So 3 minus k and k, and then I might just put brackets around those so that the k includes that i, and it's all very clear. And so what we have is the sum from k equals 0 to 3, and we sub in k equals 0, k equals 1, k equals 2, then k equals 3, and add them all together. So let's expand. When we have k equals 0, we have 3 choose 0, cos theta to the 3 minus 0, so just 3, and then i sine theta, oops, I didn't write sine, <laughs> times i sine theta to the power of 0, and then for the next k value we have 3 choose 1, cos theta to the 3 minus 1, and then i sine theta to the power of 1, so that's for k equals 1. Then we have for k equals 2, 3 choose 2, cos theta 3 minus 2, and then i sine theta squared. And then our last one is 3 choose 3, cos theta 3 minus 3, i sine theta cubed. So I've just subbed in k equals 0, k equals 1, k equals 2, k equals 3, added them together. Now we want to simplify. So 3 choose 0 is just equal to 1. So it's equal to 1 times cos cubed theta. And then i sine theta to the power of 0 is just equal to 1. So it's times by 1. So we keep it as it is. Then we have 3 choose 1. So plus 3 choose 1, which is 3 and then cos squared theta, i sine theta to the power of 1 is just i sine theta, so we just leave it like that. And then here we have 3 choose 2, which again is our 3. And this is just our Pascal's triangle, so you don't even need to think about it too much with those. It's 1, 3, 3, 1. So 1, 3, 3, 1 will be our four coefficients. And you can see that because the coefficients are symmetrical, in fact, it doesn't matter when we go back up here, it doesn't matter which order we use, our 3 minus k or our k. So we could have had cos theta to the k, i sine theta to the 3 minus k, and kept this same 3 choose k at the front. The order of those doesn't really matter because the coefficients are going to be the same. So we're just adding up, this would just be 3 cos squared theta i sine theta, but it would have been the next term along. So um, play around with that because it's just kind of interesting. And I think the more you play around with these things, the more you'll understand how it all fits together and the more likely you are to get everything right. So I'm continuing on. Now we have our k equals 2, so again we have 3 choose 2, which is 3 cos theta, because it's just to the power of 1, so cos theta, and then i squared, negative, the square root of negative 1 squared is just negative 1, so it's times negative sine squared theta. So in fact this becomes a negative there, and then we have sine squared theta. And then our last term is 3 choose 3, which is just 1. 
times cos theta to the power of 0, so that's just 1, times i sine theta to the power of 3, so i cubed is equal to negative i. So we have minus i sine cubed theta. So I'll rewrite that one last time without any of the mistakes and bringing our i's to the front because generally we write, so we've got cos cubed theta plus 3i, we'll tend to bring that i to the front, and then cos squared theta sine theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta minus i sine cubed theta, and that's the expansion of cos theta plus i sine theta cubed. So that's our final answer.